everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to have some fun with a sock blank. This is a Knit Pick sock blank that is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's a double stranded blank, which means there's two strands of yarn knit together. So when you unravel it, you will get a matched pair perfect for identical socks or what have you. I am pre-soaking this blank in eight cups of water with four tablespoons of white vinegar for a minimum of 30 minutes before we dye it with our Wilton Color Mist Sprays. Hooray! Uh, these cans have spray food coloring and it's really great for a shallow application of color on yarn, whether you, you're using a blank or a skein. Now the mechanism with which food coloring binds to yarn is very similar to the mechanism with acid dyes. You need to have vinegar, which we've got in our pre-soak, and you need to have a protein-based yarn. Wool, silk, alpaca, um, even nylon it has a similar chemical structure to proteins because it's a polyamid, and so you can dye nylons with food colorings as well. But the technique I'm going to do today will not work on acrylic or cotton. The project we're going to do today is one that we have wanted to do for a long time. Technically I've done it before, but it was in a live stream. And so I wanted to have a freestanding dedicated video to a technique where we will spray our sock blank on both sides. So on the front side, I'm going to do the rainbow gradient that I love to do with these blanks, assuming that I have enough of the food coloring for that. Uh, and then on the back side, we're going to spray it with black. And so then when we unravel it, we will have black speckles throughout our yarn with then some like the bright rainbow gradient. And I think it's going to look really, really cool. I'm going to let this soak for at least 30 minutes and then we'll get spraying. We'll see how much of these sprays I actually have left. I protected my work surface with some plastic wrap that we'll use to wrap up the blank after we've dyed it. Uh, I've used these sprays in a lot of videos. I haven't repurchased the rainbow yet. We'll see if there's enough. But if you want a good dupe, uh, you can get like a Misto pressurized spray can. I think Jacquard also sells one. I haven't tried the Jacquard one. But then you can mix up your own colors to then have a pressurized spray. But given that these go so far, I am actually pretty happy with them. So I'm just going to start with our rainbow. Yeah, I mean, it feels like there's a reasonable amount of liquid in here. So I am happy. I'm sure that at some point they will run out. But, you know, we'll deal with that when we get there. Depends on how, like, heavy you go with your color. But what's wonderful about these is that uh, because we have the vinegar in here already, and because we... So because we already have the vinegar in our yarn, um, and the spray just gives this light layer of color, you get, you know, and you get color on the top, but not the bottom. And that is why I absolutely love these. Oops. And you know, ah, you get dye on your fingers and then you get that on the blank. Mistakes happen. We'll just go with it. Oh, there we go. Feels like the blue could be close to the end. And I still feel some liquid in there, but we'll we'll see. Certainly, I I might add more in a moment, but I want to make sure I get at least like a certain amount of coverage on the blanks. I'm going back over. 
I really, really love these sprays. And again, I am impressed. The first time I did this, I was like, wow, this is not a very cost-effective way to play around with a rainbow. But it really is not that bad. And the nice thing is that, you know, we've got the green is bigger than the red on this blank, what we've got. But since this is a double stranded blank, we know that we will end up with like a matched gradient. So it doesn't matter if it's slightly different. I now want to wipe up as much of the spray as I can off of these edges. And that's because we're gonna flip it over and I don't want uh, to alter that with the flip. But the nice thing about the sprays is that they pretty much go where you want them to in the first place. So that is nice. I mean, there is a little color on here, but not a ton. Okay, now is the moment of truth, and I am going to flip the blank over. So I did this once in the Sock Blank Special 2 in one of the live streams with like spraying. Yeah, I think I had a whole stream dedicated to spraying. And so I did play around with this a little bit, but this is a whole new way of looking at it. Now I'm going to take the black color mist and I think I'm going to start I'm going to start by spraying like half. I'm not sure how far this will go. So then I will at least get you know, if I were to leave it like this with just this black stripe on one side, we would have white and black speckles on the other side, which is a cool look. There's still definitely going to be some white, probably from some of the resists, but not as much as, as there would be if I didn't spray the reverse side. So if I wanted to use these sprays and get even more of a rainbow, I could have sprayed the back with a reverse gradient. Um, I could have done the same colors on the other side. Uh, those are options as well, but I think we'll get the best sense of this effect by doing a completely different color on the back because then we'll be able to look at and see just how much white is left. And now I'm going through with the middle. You know, I could also just try spraying one side but doing the wrong side of the blank versus the right side. That's something that I have not tried that could be really interesting. All right, I'm going to go through and fill in some areas that I wish had a little more color, but overall, I am very satisfied with this. Again, there's still going to be some white. Um, specific, probably mostly along the edges, but uh, overall. Okay, that's pretty good. Once again, I'm going to go through and wipe up all of these edges, uh, make sure that none of the spray got onto the ground or anything like that. Now we need to set the color. So we are going to wrap our blank up with the plastic wrap and then we will microwave it. So first folding that over and then we will roll it up into a jelly roll. It looks like some of the black may have penetrated the other side. I am not sure. I normally don't flip this. But being careful and trying not to squeeze it, I'm going to pop this in a microwave safe full and microwave it on high for a total of four minutes in two minute increments. I think I went ahead and steamed this for a total of six minutes in two minute increments. You want it to be hot to touch. Um, the reason why I do increments is to make sure things are still wet and it doesn't get too hot. 
but I have never scorched any of my fiber. Uh, but microwaves vary, so take care. Uh, I'm going to let this cool completely before we open it up to wash it. It's now time to open up and wash our blank. So you can see we've got our black on one side, which is looking rather purple actually, um, and our other color on the other. It's really hard to get black food coloring. Um, I guess I'm, compared to the purple, it does look more black, but it does tend to be purpley overall. I use nitpick sock legs a lot, and I really like them. I found that the they sort of stay together a little better than the wool to die for blanks that I use. Now wool to die for is cheaper, so that is always a consideration. Um, I'm using some clear dish soap, but our color is in the yarn, and I didn't get any color on my hands from doing this, which is always a nice feature. But, you know, if we look, we've got orange, and there's some places where maybe I did the black a little too heavy because, like in the yellow, maybe we see that black coming through a bit. But, I think that we're gonna have some white, uh, some black speckles, and some rainbow speckles. And so I think the whole thing will be really cool. Um, I'm now gonna go put this here in my spray dryer, hang it up to dry, and then we'll come back and look at the blank before we unravel it. I love my spin dryer, not even 24 hours later, and the blank is completely dry. On the right side, we see this almost muted rainbow. It is less bright than what I typically get because we've got this black on the other side. It really is amazing that we got the coloration the way we did. I think it would be really fun to hand paint the right side of a blank like this with a dark color through the middle and then just little bits of rainbow on the edge to give it a little bit of a rainbow pop. Uh, that could be really, really fun. But I'm really excited to unravel this and to see the dark blackish, well, it's really a deep purple. It's not quite a true black, but to see how these speckles interplay with each other, I think is going to be awesome. I think that this video has been one of the most requested ones. So before I go and unravel this blank, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, turn on notifications, and let me know what you think in the comments. What kinds of variations on this technique would you like to see? It is worth giving a little bit of a close up of the right side of the blank and then the wrong side of the blank. There's definitely gonna be white left. As I move it, I can see that in the resist marks. But how much white? Only unraveling will tell. And now I am gonna go unravel this blank off camera with my PVC pipe knitting naughty so that way we can really see the full color progression gradient that we created today. You guys, this yarn is amazing. Ultimately, this is very similar to a lot of other speckled rainbows gradients that I've created in the past, but this time there's a lot less white and this grayish purplish black color that we sprayed on the wrong side of the blank is shown through throughout all of these colors. It would be a lot of fun to play with this rainbow in many different ways. What if we added blue on the back or pink or green? Uh, my three-year-old really loves green rainbows, whatever that means. Certainly, you're not limited to rainbows with this technique, and you could even do all over color on both sides to create this really kind of unique pattern. So you could do purple on one side and blue on the other, and you would get something that would be really, really hard to do otherwise. It's hard to get alternating speckles like this with any other technique besides adding a shallow layer onto a blank of some sort. 
And the best part about using a double-stranded blank with this technique is that we've got this matched set. And it doesn't matter that maybe my purple was a little longer than my yellow section because these colors will transition at exactly the same place. Whereas if I did two different single-stranded blanks, there would be more differences in the color transitions than what we have here. Unraveling this was a lot of fun. And I will insert a couple pictures of what the yarn looked like crimped up as it came off of the blank, but it's just so much fun. Now I need to go relax the crimp. Uh, so as soon as I'm done filming this video, I will go soak this in some uh, cool tap water and hang it up to dry again so that way that crimp from unraveling a sock blank uh, will be gone. This yarn is so beautiful however you look at it and I think that this could turn into something absolutely absolutely beautiful. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this video and like my approach to trying out different techniques with all kinds of materials, head over and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreon is a platform where fans can support the content creators that they really enjoy in exchange for some really cool perks. You can find links in the video description and iCard. I think dyeing rainbows are possibly my favorite kind of color combination. Something about them just makes me so, so, so happy and I just love playing with them. Uh, I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching.